Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here from Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. And in the last really year and a half, we have seen the greatest influx and surge of first time RV owners and buyers. Uh, as far as I can tell in history, there's never been this many people who decided, let's all go camping, honey. Along with that though, we have a lot of new members to our community that has a lot of generally common sense, but a lot of um, unspoken kind of rules and courtesies out there that maybe the new members of our camping community are not aware of. And that's what I want to focus on today is a different kind of top five. I want to look at my top five like points of courtesy and consideration for um, first time RVers, things you may not know about or realize. And what I want to encourage people through this video, first of all, after you've done, if I've missed something that is like really a hot button item for you, leave us some comments or, or say, hey, thanks, hey, let her share this to your social uh, profiles. Because I think there's a lot of people out there from what I'm really hearing and seeing this year that really need to be made aware of the general, say, rules of the road when it comes to camping. And I also really highly encourage if you do see someone will say an offender to something off this list or something off your personal list, I don't recommend getting actively heightened, excited, engaged with them as uh, maybe they just don't know. It, it doesn't hurt to necessarily say, hey folks, uh, you may not be aware, but, and then share some wisdom with them. And if they give you any resistance back, don't get really directly involved. Just step away. If it's, if it's just something that's just affecting them, maybe let it go. Maybe they'll learn the hard way. Like when, yeah, when you're a parent and you're telling your kid, you're going to fall down and it's going to hurt the big no uh and then they fall down and then they cry and they got hurt. Like, told you so. If it's just going to affect them, maybe they got to learn the hard way. If it's going to affect somebody else, at that point, that's when I recommend maybe you get the park ranger or the ownership or management or the park police or whatever involved. Don't make it a personal standoff situation that could quickly escalate into something that nobody wants to deal with. Enough of that framing up the thing. What are we talking about? What should we all be doing to respect one another, the campsite, and the experience? First up on our list, please don't walk through someone else's campsite. I, I, there's something about when we leave our house. Like, you wouldn't just walk through someone else's front yard. But there's something about when we leave our house, it's like we forget the association, we forget the general courtesy and the rule. When somebody is using a site, think of that like their front yard. And you typically wouldn't just go marching through someone's front yard unannounced just on your way to someone else. If you do need to come up, you'd typically announce yourself, go, hey, Ted, Karen, something like that, or hey, hey, neighbor, if you don't know their name, or hey, guys, can I ask you a question? But man, don't just go walking through somebody else's site. That's just weird, it's uncomfortable, it feels like a personal trespass a little bit. Stay to the, the designated pathways. If there's an open campsite, that's that's a little more fair game, but if somebody's actively on the site, or at least has their trailer there, maybe just work your way around. Number two on our list, be cool with the volume of your outside entertainment, guys. Try not to just leave that thing cranking the entire time. That might be your song, that might be your jam. Don't leave it on 11 the entire time you're camping. Woo! Um, Excuse me, could you turn that down a little, please? My my wife has a migraine. It's Freedom Rock, brother! Yeah, I'm, I, I'm sorry, it's just it's just that it's a little loud. What? Louder? Hang on, brother! Although if you're really lucky, like there's this one time I left Got No Shame by Brother Kane playing on infinite repeat at max volume in my stereo in my house for like a week, my neighbor must have really loved that song because he actually threw a rock through my window so he could hear it louder. Number three on our list, try not to leave an excessive amount of bright lights on on your campsite in the evening hours if you are camping near anybody else. Even if you draw the shades on these windows, there's still often a lot of light bleed through. And I, I get it, like here on this Catalina, for example, this has those 16 color multi-strobe, multi-function, like party lights. They'll just get you like all strobed out and having fun. They're awesome, they're fun, I get it. There's a place for them, it's a bit of a patio party space. But when it's 2.30 in the morning, and I've got what looks like uh, the Las Vegas Review disco light show going outside of my window, it becomes less entertaining for the other folks around you. So just once, it, once it's going down time, once it's uh, after hours time, 
typically a lot of some parks have guidelines around this i think it generally accepted things like okay if it's after nine o'clock i get that we'd have some fun it's kind of dying down to quiet hours now that's about the time you also want to be chilling out with the lights and i get that your fifth wheel has like a really sweet light package on the front and because you were under the awning and you might not be thinking about it you may not realize that you left those nose lights on it's just one of those extra things to remember again just a little courtesy thing because now i've got lights broadcasting across to the site across me not everyone is as much of a fan for them and some of these new big flashy fifth wheels holy cow dude they've got like a flipping bat signal on the front of them nowadays Okay, and now number two on our list, and um, it's no accident this is number two on the list. <laughs> You'll see what I mean. This is actually what prompted me to start this video. Take a look at this picture. You know I talk a lot. It takes a lot to leave me speechless. If you're not aware of what we're looking at right here, these are a pair of individuals. I would like to give them the benefit of the doubt and think that they are totally new to this. They are washing out their sewer hose, sewage, poo hose, basically, on the public picnic table where a grandfather and grandmother are going to serve hot dogs and chips to their grandkids. And if you notice, they're even using their fresh water hose to do it. And I bet your paycheck they had it all shoved down in there like a plumber snake cleaning this sucker out. I've, I've covered their faces up. I don't know who they are. With respect, I don't know that I want to. I would like to think these are people who just maybe really didn't know. And again, I, I tend to give people the benefit of the doubt to a fault point. But this is, this is an egregious violation of campsite courtesy, personal health and safety. There's so much wrong with what we just looked at. So here is my message, basically, because it's more than just what all the things that we're looking at there. When we are talking sewer stuff, when we're talking dumping stuff, what you don't do, you don't mix freshwater drinking hoses at all with black tank sewer stuff. Don't shove your own fresh drinking water hose down into a sewer hose to flush it out. Don't hook your fresh drinking water hose up to a black tank flush to fill it out. In the event that even though that is highly unlikely, there is any level of cross contamination. There are so many sicknesses and parasites and things that you could, you could get as a result of that kind of behavior. It is, uh, it's, it's just not worth it. It's just not worth it. And it is so unbelievably inconsiderate to expose someone else to something like that unknowingly. Now this applies not just on, on campsites that have like full hookup. A lot of RV parks have like a freshwater fill and sewer station right at the entrance or exit. So you could fill your tanks or flush your tanks when you're leaving. Please, 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 please don't use the parks freshwater uh, hoses to hook up to your black tank stuff to flush your sewer hoses. Don't do it. You need separate non-drinking water like green hoses and color code them. Get different color. White and blue hoses tend to be drinking water and it'll literally say drinking water right on it. By the way, did you know there are difference in hoses? Uh, the ones that say drinking water are made with basically different compounds that won't potentially taint uh, the water that you're drinking when the hose is just left out and exposed in the sun. A common garden hose doesn't do that and could theoretically taint the water that you're drinking. Now, if you're, if you're at all like me and anybody that ever grew up drinking water out of a green garden hose, you roll your eyes and you scoff at that. I get it. But what I'm saying is when it's just used for gardening the plants or for watering the plants, that's one thing. When it's also used to flush your taco Tuesday down the drain, that's something else. That's gross, that's disgusting. For your safety and for the courtesy of everybody else, please don't do that. Share this video for this point alone, please. And normally I like to do some kind of honorable mention. Maybe in this way, in this video, it's more of a dishonorable mention, but regardless, what I'm getting at is camping is as much about respecting one another and our facilities as it is the environment, I think. 
If we don't take care of the areas in which we camp, there's not going to be areas for us to camp. And the greatest example of that is how, unfortunately, and uh, recently here, some uh, BLM land, lands, that's the Bureau of Land Management, so basically free camping spaces have been so badly um, disrespected by their occupants that a lot of them have been closed and some of them may not reopen as a result. So now everybody's kind of lost. It feels like a case of we can't have nice things. And one of the things I want to point out uh, in relation to respecting the environment here is don't burn your garbage. Like one of the things, a policy we have uh, here is that when we walk through our parking lot, if we see a thing laying on the ground, we pick it up, we get rid of it. So whoever was done with their Biggs Hidden Valley Ranch flavored Zesty Ranch sunflower seeds, which is that has to be like the most Midwestern little snack possible. When you're done snacking on your Zesty Ranch sunflower seeds or your Chipotle, uh, <laughs> Chipotle peas or whatever, wasabi peas, I don't know. Don't, please don't just throw this on the fire. Don't come out with a bag of garbage that you just chuck on the fire. That's disrespecting our environment. Plan ahead, plan accordingly, make accommodations for that. And really, that is the ideal lead in for me regarding what I think is the single number one biggest, most important takeaway from this list. And to me, it is the cardinal rule for camping courtesy in general. Leave your site better than how you found it. Whatever that means. If that means you need to pick up a thing or two, if that means you need to sweep something up, leave it a little bit nicer for the next person than when you had it yourself. And that right there, I think, is just the core basis of campsite courtesy for any facility, any person, any park, anywhere. I don't care if you have a pop-up travel trailer, fifth wheel motorhome, or some weird hybrid cargo trailer conversion job. That is just basic camping courtesy 101. So whatever it is, when, when you're done camping there, have something picked up, have something cleaned up, improve it in some way so that the next people can have their good experience too. Because how would you like it if you showed up to your campsite? There's a ripped open bag of trash, like a raccoon knocked over a, a trash can all over the place over here. You wouldn't want to be that? Don't leave that for the next person. So once again, if you see a, a newer member of our camping community, because they are, they're, they're new members to our camping family. You got to remember it like that. It's not like, oh, I've been doing this for a while and these are just the new people coming in. Take care of them. You were the new person once too. If you see somebody who maybe is doing something that doesn't make sense or isn't the right way to necessarily do it, kindly maybe offer them some suggestions. Again, if they resist, don't engage. That's It's not really your place to get involved if it's a severe issue. Like, again, just throwing this off the top of my head, like somebody cleaning out a sewer hose with a fresh water hose on a public picnic table, <laughs> just for example. Um, maybe, maybe mention to the, uh, the park management uh, that perhaps uh, they, they might want to check into this and, and leave it up to them. You've done your part at that point. You can't fix everything. You can try to do little things to make a big difference every now and then though. And that's what I'm trying to do here. If you appreciate the message that we're trying to say, because I didn't come today with anything. I have no links in my video description to sell you anything. I've, I'm, I'm not offering parts for sale. I'm not saying you should come by this camper. I'm not doing any of that today. This is just pure camping community. Let's help one another become better is all I'm trying to say today. And if you appreciate that, hit the like button on the video, leave me some comments. Uh, please subscribe if you appreciate what we're trying to do here and share this to your social media profiles. I would really like this message to get out to as many people as possible. Because again, in the last really 18 months, it seems like there are more people that need to understand the general practices and courtesies that we all need to participate in. Otherwise, we all get penalized and we all lose out as a whole. So as always, a little walking and talking word from the nerd from old Uncle Josh over here at Halet RV. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.